Welcome to Catalyst. I'm Doug Webster, your host of the RETN STEM Education Series, A Renewed Culture of Innovation. This series was created so you can become familiar with things happening in the world of innovation. Today's episode is The Generator, Burlington's newest makerspace. Our guest today is Christy Mitchell. Christy is the manager of The Generator, which is located on Main Street in Burlington, Vermont. Welcome to the show, Christy. Thank you, Doug. Good to see you. Christy, tell us, what is a makerspace? Well, a makerspace in the broad term is a space where people can make objects using a variety of tools and technology. Um, this specific makerspace, and in many cases, it's often a shared space where people are bringing in uh, tools that are either too large or too expensive or too fancy to operate on their own in their own shops. Um, and they can collaborate with others to utilize those mm -hmm. tools and mm -hmm. equipment. Now, what, what type of equipment are you referring to? Well, um, often you will see um, tools, materials, um, equipment that is geared towards rapid prototyping, mm -hmm. um, for instance. So in our case, we have a, a CNC milling machine, um, a 3D printer, a laser cutter, um, a vinyl cutter. Um, a, we also have an electronics uh -huh. section, yeah. um, you know, geared for people who are doing soldering, um, circuitry, um, you know, development of um, computers and robotics and items that move. Um, so, in that respect, you know, there's a lot of these interesting, cool tools that you can play and, and make things. Um, but then, you know, in our case, we also have a um, high-speed access to, to gig internet. Um, so we have mm -hmm. an app application lab cool. um, and computers. Um, we're also lucky to have uh, jewelry tools, uh -huh. um, a whole jewelry um, shop. So you can not only play with, you know, objects that are, you know, designed for the computer, but also get down um, and manipulate objects with your hands. So. Mm -hmm. And there's more to come, you yeah, know. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That is, so it, it's like the integration of arts and technology, yeah. engineering, and Absolutely. a whole bunch of other Science, things. Science, technology, yeah. art, yeah. Um, creativity, um, not only with your mind, but with your hands. And um, it's innovation, but it's also collaboration where you're being inspired by people around you and what they're mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, exactly. Now, you, you have run uh, art studios mm -hmm. for years and all. Yeah. What do you see are the, you know, the major difference between the art studio and the makerspace? Sure. Um, so for the last five or six years, um, I've been designing uh, and changing industrial spaces to mm -hmm. house um, creative artist incubators. So artists have individual studios where mm -hmm. they bring in their own materials and machines and skill sets and they're focused mostly on their own creativity and, and um, bra branching out within their own skill set to a buyer or uh, collectors or people who can support that art. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously what comes from a shared studio space is you are going to have collaboration, but it's not as much a maker space in the fact that um, you're sharing tools, resources. Um, with the maker space, you're thinking about not only furthering yourself, but you're also learning from the people around you. Um, and you almost have a shared goal of you know, innovation and what can we all come up with and mm -hmm. um, with the artist studios, um, the setup's a little different. So you, it, in the ones that I've created, you have um, a large warehouse with artist spaces and they're all, um, at, have their own hours. They can come and go. So sometimes you don't see each other, um, but they do have a shared gallery in a lot yeah. of cases. So there's an exhibition area where the public is invited in um, during open hours to view work that's either created by the artists there or artists that are in um, the region. Um, so it's more about um, artwork and creating pieces that are for the home, not always functional. It's mostly 
um, aesthetic. So pieces for the wall or on a mm -hmm. pedestal or a sculptural or, you know, those type of standard right. Right. works of art. Whereas a maker space, you're creating pieces that uh, do things do or things. Yeah. Um, yeah. inspire you or, it's, or um, you know, get you engaged. Now, in the art studio, you're talking about a little bit of a commercialization angle. So the maker space, to what degree are we talking about commercialization of, of things that are developed within that space? Yeah, I mean, I'm still learning about the maker culture. Um, and one thing that I'm excited to learn about is how um, people can come in and interact with the people who are mm -hmm. making um, things happen and developing new applications because someone could potentially come in um, and visit a maker in their studio and say, you know, you're really great at this quad copter and can mm -hmm. we put my GoPro on this and how can you help me develop what I need for my own applications and they could potentially um, you know, support themselves with sponsors or people who um, want to exchange um, not only um, monetary, you know, goods for services, but also mm -hmm. um, shared ideas. And so I'm excited to learn how that's going to work within our, within our own space, but then also spaces around the country. Um, and we're fully aware of um, the fact that people are watching and, and for the next new things in these kind of spaces um, in that tech sector. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant, you said around the country and around the state as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Several other maker spaces are emerging in, Absolutely. in various locations. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned, uh, you mentioned some of the tools and equipment mm -hmm. that uh, is currently in the generator maker space. What are some other tools and equipment that you see coming down the road that uh, or will be purchased and, and what for? Well, um, we're currently developing um, more of our hand tools, power tools, um, mm -hmm. the wood shop. Um, there's a lot of uh, devices and um, molds and structures that you can create in a wood shop just by, your, by hand. Um, it's really interesting to have one large room with um, a laser cutter in proximity to a, ju a jewelry and metalworking mm -hmm. skill tool set um, so you can walk from one machine to the other or go from one section to the other and really finalize and complete a project um, the milling machine is on order mm -hmm. that's i'm excited to see that come Great. in in the next few weeks yeah. um, really so developing our power tools hand tools we've got a full list um, of items we're looking for, you know, we might eventually have the capability to have not only a milling machine but a hand lathe that you can, you know, do it um, with little dials on your own. Um, and then, you know, our launch last week, people were asking us, you know, what about fiber arts? What about, mm -hmm. you know, the connection to, um, you know, Arduino uh, kits and you know what about this what about that and so everyone who comes in the door has an, a specific interest and yeah. so that's the really fun thing where I'm thinking how can we get everyone involved in their own little way and offer something for them but that it also inspires other people who are more excited about a 3D printer but mm -hmm. maybe didn't realize that if we had a jacquard printer for fiber or something else you know so yep. We yeah. started with the tool list. Really, that tool list I think will be ever expanding, and it's only we're only limited by our resources in the space. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now you mentioned uh, gathering last weekend. How mm -hmm. many people were at that gathering? So we decided to have a launch party um, on Saturday, um, March 29th, 2014. Yeah. And um, we expected. Um, originally a couple hundred people, two or three hundred people, yeah. um, you know, planning just capacity wise and for food we were thinking okay maybe we should have enough food for three to five hundred people but uh, we had nearly a thousand people show up that evening wow. um, in four hours um, which is a lot of people to talk to um, but but just planting that seed of excitement and enthusiasm and seeing um, so many people ready for a space like this um, in Burlington, but um, 
not just Burlington. You know, it could be anywhere. And this model that we're um, inspired by and creating here can be um, used anywhere. Now, now, what is the uh, revenue stream? What are the what are the main revenue streams for a for this type of makerspace? Sure. Uh, there's all kinds of different models out there. Yeah. Uh, but this one in particular, what what can you? Um, well, when you start a maker space or you think about um, something like this, there's there's really different costs up front. Mm -hmm. um, so you could potentially have a group of people with all their own tools who decided to come together and have their own shop and share it and invite other people in. Mm -hmm. um, we instead did a little bit of that, but also working with local colleges said, you know, how can we get some really amazing tools in here that not one individual could afford on their own, but we've got in here um, to inspire and, and educate um, people of all ages. And so with our model, we were actually able to get some of this higher tech equipment like the 3D printer and laser cutter. Um, so you have to think about, okay, what was the upfront cost right there? Um, mm -hmm. For us, it, it, it's, it's a trade, it's an it's a investment into mm -hmm our future in this community. Um, but if it wasn't, if you went out and bought these things, how would you pay for it, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, you have to think of things about uh, machine hours, you know, if you charge so a user $10 an hour or whatever it was, um, that could be a potential revenue stream to pay off that machine. Mm -hmm. um, for us, we've got to think about um, the cost of the space, the cost of our staff, mm -hmm. um, paying our instructors, um, paying for upfront costs with materials and build out of the, of the physical location. Um, so what our revenue streams are going to be is memberships. So there's, a various, there's various memberships that people can um, sign up for on a month-to-month -month basis. And how much are the memberships or what's, what's the range? So there? what we've launched um, this week is uh, studio memberships. So um, makers can come in and pay, at least for our Pioneer Special, mm -hmm. um, as we get things off the ground over the next three months, is $100 a month. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they pay up front $300 to be in the space for three months. We see how things go. Mm -hmm. If that if that um, works out for everybody, we'll keep that going. Um, those are already full. We have a wait list, so mm -hmm. uh, that worked. Hey, good, <laughs> good. Um, and then we also have general memberships, so uh, those individuals as well as um, the general public could pay. Um, at least at this point, the three months would be fifty dollars a month, so one hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. um, to have access during nights and weekends. Um, we're getting feedback from from the public that, hey, I want to do a drop-in day, you know, so that membership may be twenty dollars to come in and tinker for yeah. a day, um, and then there also is interest in um, family days, so people coming in with their children um, and working together and inspiring each other and and really, um, you know, getting that next generation thinking about what they can make. Yes. Um, so there's studio memberships, there's general memberships, but really my job over the next few weeks will we'll to cater that interest towards what day of the week can you come in. Mm -hmm. um, and then during the daytime, we're thinking of doing um, kids camps, you know, mm -hmm. during the summer and during the fall, and collaborating with local institutions on um, their continuing their programming to do, you know, build it, break it, make it kind of mm -hmm. camps. Um, um, and so that's one revenue stream. Um, mm -hmm. Another would be to um, have equipment and things that people can buy right in the space. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for a slight markup if you can get it, you know, at an educational rate. Maybe you're offering some things to people that they can purchase to further what they're doing. Right. Um, there's also individual workshops or drop-in drop weekend courses that people can take. Um, there's also classes. So And you have a classroom. We do. Yeah. 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 So currently we have a classroom uh, dedicated yeah. to uh, six beautiful co new computers and a projector so an uh, instructor can come in and inspire um, six students at a time and teach them all about, um, for example, our first two classes are introduction to 3D printing um, and in introduction to laser cutting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you say something about, you mentioned uh, before uh, about partnership with uh, colleges. Sure. Can you say more about that? And yeah. I think members will get some 
combination yes, membership? Yes, absolutely. And so for us here in Burlington, um, our collaborators have been just about everybody you can think of that's yeah. around, and there's a lot of amazing schools yeah. and institutions here. So a uh, big partnership is with Champlain College, and they are just finishing out their own maker space in their emergent media mm -hmm. department. Um, down in the south end of Burlington, which is super exciting. A rather top end makerspace. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so we have um, a 3D printer, um, thanks to them. And, um, and and about that 3D printer. Yes. What can that do? What, so what are some of the things it can do? It's a Stratasys something something or other. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a really cool um, 3D printer that can. Um, Take your 3D designs um, from SketchUp or SolidWorks or a similar program, and you can tell it to print out your prototype. Mm -hmm. It has to fit within a certain size and parameter. Um, the machine, I think, is maybe 14 inches by 14 inches, by maybe 18 to 20 inches mm -hmm. high. Um, it is an additive process, so it's printing um, with uh, melted plastic and a support material. Um, so it's really used to print high-end um, prototypes. It's usually not the finished product. You're, mm -hmm. you're realizing your designs in real life, um, and then you would send that off to be um, manufactured or cast in another material yeah. due to the low melting temperature. And of course the question is where do you send that off to? But that's, yes. that's another, that's that's another, another program. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> can you give us some examples of uh, projects that you expect to come out of the, the makerspace? Sure. What well, examples? what we were saying we're with naming. the Champlain collaboration, um, which is exciting, is so they've got their makerspace and we've got ours and we are excited to partner and say, okay, your students and your alumni can not only um, still use your facility, but, but leave that university setting and come into ours and collaborate with our members. And so we're excited about what that That's will great. look like. Um, but what were you saying? What was the next question? Oh, oh as far as, um, oh, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> So much to talk about. Yeah, there is. It, there is. It just goes on. Uh, oh, uh, just projects. What are some oh, projects. projects that, sure. that you, you So uh, right uh, now, yeah. um, t speaking about um, students who are actually in that program at Champlain, they're going to be you know, showing us their final projects, their thesis projects for school um, here in the next few weeks um, yes. and having yeah. an art show. So my background in art and curating exhibits has actually been kind of cool to partner with this new way of creating. So in a way, even though it might be a functional object or potentially be something much bigger than just the idea itself, um, it is still a piece of art. It, it still was created um, mm -hmm. by you. So showing the work um, is a, an exciting process of that. And so we want to actually have a gallery that we can show student work, projects mm -hmm. that are coming out of Generator. Um, it's since we just opened, the projects you know, are, all, are endless. I can't wait to see what's going to come yeah, out of there. Yeah, exactly. um, we had one of our uh, studio members, Matt Flago, actually print one of our first um, pieces on the 3D printer. And then I had him show the piece in one of our gallery exhibits down in the south mm. end of Burlington at the Space mm. Gallery. Um, so he was actually able to use that piece as a finished product um, by filling in and sanding. You know, it's not perfect. When it's printed, there's some lines, and depending on the machine you have, you'll have more yeah. texture or less texture. Um, but he was able to, f to create a Mobius shape, um, fill it in, um, and sand it, and paint it, and made a little sculpture that showed on a pedestal, and really was able to um, realize an idea from a computer screen into a yeah. real life object. Yeah. Yep, excellent. So, yeah. so you, the the range is art, and then you could have yeah. robots, absolutely, build, quadcopters, actual you know, yep. flight uh, devices, yeah, um, all kinds of things. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. We range. had some um, Ken Howell actually put in a piece for our opening where um, Ken Howell from Champlain College, from Champlain College, yeah. yep, yeah. Uh, one of our board members, but also um, yeah. studio member and. 
uh, professor at Champlain, um, created an object with an Arduino and some um, you know, elaborate systems where if you put your hand around it, it was telling the computer to shoot um, a laser circle onto the wall and actually ended up looking like a spiral graph and it would speed up depending on how close your hand was to the sensors, almost like the technology that's in a bat's ears. Um, right. And so what we did for the opening was actually, we had spirographs on all the tables for children and families to come in and, you know, what is it to make with your hands? You know, what's a spirograph? And then to see this, you know, projected spirograph, um, you know, made with lasers and yeah. uh, circuits was pretty cool. Yeah, that is yeah. pretty cool. All yeah. kinds all kinds of new projects we can't even think of right now that I know. are, are yeah. going to emerge, emerge out of there. Absolutely. Uh, as far as the uh, classes go, what, mm -hmm. well, what do you anticipate, uh, like say over the next three months, what type sure. of classes will be run there at the generator? So we started with um, our coolest machines, the laser cutter okay. and the 3D printer. Yeah. Um, and so the introduction classes are about using those machines with a little bit of knowledge of the software that you need to power those machines. And I think what's really going to be next is diving deeper into that software. So classes mm -hmm. specifically on SolidWorks um, or even just Illustrator, you know, how can you make vector files to, to tell a machine mm -hmm. um, exactly where you want it to go. Um, so the software will enable you to communicate with these tools. And these tools really are just giant printers. You just, right. once you finish your project, you tell it to print. Um, so software definitely will be next. Um, but then since we do have this really cool jewelry tool set, um, we're thinking now a little bit about wearable art um, as mm -hmm. a fun class. So what can you print? What can you laser cut? What can you, you know, make with these machines that then you could manipulate to be wearable? So jewelry, um, the laser cutter can engrave in leather. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I've already been thinking about um, clothing and bags and shoes and earrings and you know yeah, there's yeah. just so many fun applications um, that's more accessible to the general public. Sure, sure. Now uh, when it comes to K-12 education, where, mm -hmm. where does Generator intersect with that? So sure. What are ways that yeah. collaboration takes yeah. place? So we um, met with the Echo Center uh, which is on Lake Champlain yep. and their mission really is about lake ecology um, and so they do um, makers camps in the summer um, and in the fall and yep. we've been thinking about how can we bring these children from the elementary setting into our space um, and show them what can be created with the mm -hmm. tools that are out there um, because these are the people that are actually going to end up making the new tools that can do things we don't even know can yes. be made yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the inspiration factor is what I'm really excited about. Yeah. Um, right across the street is an elementary school and middle school. So right. um, I've been talking with them a little bit about, okay, well, let's get some of these kids in. They've been hearing the buzz about us across the street. Mm -hmm. Let's show them what's, what's possible. Now, what about teachers? Uh, what do you see as far as working with K-12 teachers? Sure. Do you see professional development for yeah. them? or yeah. or well, <laughs> maybe, right. yeah. Um, what's amazing to me is walking into the um, middle school and elementary school setting these days. Yeah. Kids are um, given iPads and yes. they're told, you know, taught how to make apps and, you know, they're just so much more technological and savvy about these instruments than yeah. we ever were, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go on a tangent on that if I thought about it too hard, you know, but, um, you know, just the fact that the kids can do just about anything they want mm -hmm. these days um, with technology and, and I think the teachers are ready to get them into settings where, you know, these kids are just ready to, to explode with, you know, yes. ideas yeah. and so that's, that's really exciting to me is to, to give a space where teachers can bring their classes and inspire them. Okay, great, excellent. Uh, we have some pictures sure. of the generator. Uh, if you want to bring those up, we'll take a look at them. Go ahead and describe what you see there. Okay, so this um, is our front hallway when you walk into the generator. Um, our tagline currently is art plus technology equals generator. Um, 
You can see to the right is some vinyl um, cut. We have a vinyl cutter so we can actually um, cut um, text and images to put on the right on the wall. So we installed this uh, just a couple weeks ago. Okay, go ahead and show another one here. There you go. Um, this is our poster designed by Ted Olson from Burlington City Arts. Um, he did great a great logo. job yeah, with our logo. Our logo was designed in collaboration um, with Ken Howell and Chris Thompson and our general board. Um, had great input where the G uh, looks like a light bulb, uh, um, which is a throwback <laughs> a little bit, but it's also about um, the spark that's created. Sure, certainly. Oh, yeah, go on to the next one. You, you just keep them rolling. Oh, there you go. There's a quadcopter. Is that yep, right? there's a quadcopter. Um, we flew that upstairs at Memorial Auditorium a couple weeks ago, uh, which was exciting. Um, that's Jesse Krems from yeah. Laboratory B, which is another, yeah. uh, it's a hacker space in Burlington, Vermont. Um, he's got a studio there. Um, there's a broader picture of uh, the 12 studios. Um, I see Steve Conant there on the left. He's a longtime Burlington maker of uh, Conant Metal and Light with uh, hand working on uh, metal tools. Um, there is our rapid prototyping lab. So you can see Erin Barnaby, who's our first teacher for laser cutting, uh, touching the laser cutter. She's actually printing, or cutting rather, um, orange acrylic to make little uh, key fobs for people to take with them with our logo. Um, you can see some people there on our, our new Mac system um, in the App Lab um, that has gigabyte access. Um, you know, definitely with support from University of Vermont, they're really excited about Excellent. this um, with Burlington Telecom. There's our classroom. There's classroom yeah. Yep, yeah. six computers there, uh, plenty of white wall space to project uh, slideshows, etc. Um, looks like there is a studio that Champlain College has with their Emergent Media Center. That'll be a space for students to use and uh, meet. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome. Great. Well, how do people join? Uh, so if they visit our website, uh, generatorvt.com, mm -hmm. um, they can fill out a form or find out more information and they can let us know what their specific interests are. Okay, great. Great. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. Uh, Christy, I want to thank you for being yeah. on the show today. I could talk all day about this stuff. It's Absolutely. really inspiring and exciting. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my guest today was Christy Mitchell. Christy manages the Burlington's, Burlington's new maker space, the generator, and it was telling us all about the new space and how you can participate. Uh, for more information about this show, related internet links, and other th shows in this series, go to retn.org and look for Makers. For more information about how to start a makerspace in your community, email info at champlainmakerfair.com. Thank you for joining us.